Hi everyone, we're here at the Rensing Center in Pickens, South Carolina, and we're going to talk with Ellen today about... It's been artistic home for 30 years, and it's been a studio for about 100 years. So the place itself has had um, a, a new life lately in the last five or six, because my son, who is also a sculptor, uh, came through with his uh, buddies from College of Charleston and reamed it out and started over. And they've been coming back ever since to play with my 92-year-old mama. She taught me everything I know about gardening and creative thinking and reading. Go thirsty. Go find out what you don't know. So the Rensing Center is a combination of environmental, creative, and economic. And as a residency program, it's a 501c3 nonprofit status, we believe that putting people together in a situation where all three of those disciplines can talk to each other, and international, interdisciplinary, and intergenerational, the 30-somethings talking to the 90-somethings can actually learn and teach. This garden Mutual. has a brand new feel to it and it's on a place where there used to be a house. The garden was, it turns out, where the uh, pigs and chickens used to forage. So guess what? The soil turned out to be real fertile. Ooh, yeah. We've got a Brazilian uh, intern who's working this summer and she's learning how things grow because she grew up in a, a concrete city called Brasilia. So it's fascinating to her to watch things come out of the ground and she's eating raw food. Um, this tree, is one that um, that has been here for quite a while, so we feel like it graces our place. Turned out we found out it's hollow. It's still quite healthy. It's an old oak, and uh, it's, it's really kind of a secret magic place. The greenhouse back here was one of our uh, workshop projects that we did this last year. So that was a mutual group. And garden food, besides feeding the residents, also feeds the hungry. We're part of a community garden project. Here in this room was the original studio when I moved here, 79. This building had no floor. It had been the welding shop for a very favorite guy who was the blacksmith for the local farmers. He knew how to fix anything. So he was very popular. His original forge was right there. And it's a foot shorter than it needed to be because there's that much cement down on the floor. Mm. We'll have workshops here and a variety of, of folks coming through for a number of different disciplines in the crafts, which has been my field. I was a quilter for. The main room is now kind of the heart of the Rensing Center. It's living room, it's been, um, it's been staging area for major banquets, it's been a wedding. Uh, this quilt was a result of a workshop a couple of months ago that was um, attended by people from all over the country who were pretty interesting uh, collage and paper artists. So we learned a technique called paper batik, and that is a piece called Art Harvest which was done in honor of Eli Montgomery, who's right around the corner. is about to be uh, transformed into what we hope is gonna be an industrial kitchen. So it's got a lot of history here too. This was the, the kiln shed, but it's a perfect space for mm -hmm. a real restaurant quality yeah, kitchen. Yeah, beautiful since, windows. Yeah, food is outside. a central feature of our mm -hmm. affection here. We love to have a space where we can have really good mm -hmm. um, cuisine. And what I love also in my favorite restaurants is being able to look out through from the place mm -hmm. where the people are sitting with their dining and watch a really good creative chef mm -hmm. do their thing yeah. and talk about it. That's this great. part of the property is my mother's house. She moved, she and my dad moved down here in 1981 and her house where she still lives um, is very clean and spare and white. But she has macular degeneration, so some of the objective is to keep her here in the company of young people and vigorous minds. And her, um, her enthusiasm for what's going on is just great. She's still got all her mind and 
has read every known book, so it's oh, one of my favorite so things great. to keep the library going in her honor. What an act of love. We're in a really sweet little kitchen that has been home to a number of people. It's like a little ship, this house, and it was the first building on the property uh, after the, uh, the welding shop uh, designed by an architect who was very involved in uh, sustainability 30 years ago. The building is in transition from being Jamie's pottery studio to being the Rensing Center's major residence and a, a new kind of studio space. So it's been reamed out and shoveled out and transformed already and tomorrow the, um, the people are coming with the septic tank and there's a new roof going in and we'll have a kind of water treatment system for the paper and clay studio that is totally recycled gray water. So cisterns and a lot of environmental stuff. But let me show you how this environmental building works. These walls are a concept that you probably never heard of because nobody can sell it to you. It's a genius idea called a tombe wall. And Mr. Tombe was a Frenchman, obviously, who's, um, concept was that if you use the heat of the sun and the cool of the earth, you have a perfect solar passive system. So this entire south facing glass is, um, is the, uh, the shell, but the supporting walls are borne by these thermal mass uh, cement walls. And they're painted black on the south side and the eve is such that the sun comes in in the, in the winter and, and stays out in the summer because the angle of the sun is different. The sun stays high in the summer and low in the winter. So it hits the wall when you need it to. The mass absorbs the heat on a sunny day in the, in the wintertime. And it radiates the heat back out all day long, very gently. So this room is toasty but it's also very cool in the summer, which in the south is as important. We're tucked into the north face of the, uh, of the hill, so there's, uh, there's cool on the north wall. The earth acts as insulation. And back in this end of the building will be the uh, clay and paper studio. And along this south face is going to be an orchard. Mm -hmm. It's already acting as a garden, but mm -hmm. we'll also have beehives. The forest is full of sourwood trees, which make a very particularly delicious kind of honey. Great. These two kilns are a legacy of Jamie, who's leaving them to the rinsing center. Uh, Raku kiln. Raku was a technique that he was good at and famous for. Pathways have all been marked as nature trail. Uh, we have a resident naturalist who's really quite proficient have additional stuff going on. There's some figs that are going crazy. Um, kale and potatoes. Eggplant of a very nice variety. The basis of this garden was a wonderful one it, called Hidcut in, um, in England in the Cotswolds. And the idea is to have rooms, different rooms, so you feel like an indoor space and you can treat it differently in each of the mm -hmm. each of the characteristics of the room. One of the things that I think the Rensing Center is best at is the idea that creativity only comes from standing in a different place from where you usually look at things and having the the, the opportunity to and the privilege to breathe in. People spend so much time pouring out, particularly creative people, pour out all the time. And the critical thing to healing and retrieval of that creative force in anybody is to be able to just stop. So this place is meant for that. The residency applications involve saying what you might want to do, but I also make it clear that you don't have to jump through a particular hoop. And that's been an amazing draw because in my own experience as an artist, the thing that I learned was that the privilege of doing what you choose to pull your own juices, your own forces back into place is really a vital thing. It is.